Hey guys, welcome back. We're Canadian Homesteading and How To Channel. We do uh, quite a few eco diesel videos, which is what we're bringing you today. I want to touch a little bit on this uh, main bearing issue with these trucks. I constantly get emails about is this truck reliable? You know, all you hear on the forums is how they blow up, main bearings, with a few other things, but the bearing is the big issue from what I can see. There's a YouTuber I just discovered, uh, I forget his name now, I just watched it this morning. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, he's found uh, clogged oil passages for the main bearing full of soot. And um, I've heard this from other people actually that have done teardowns on the engine. And it's, uh, I think, I think, and it's just me, I'm not a mechanic by any stretch. I think prob the problem with these engines is the uh, pr oil gets pre-contaminated. Pre <laughs> Basically, it gets dirtied up way before it should. The oil passages get clogged, and then they, the bearing heats up and fails, uh, which is what you can see in the video below. I'll show you in the description. But what I want to talk about is how you can kind of prevent that. Keep your oil clean. Hopefully, keep your engine, right? I've got about a quarter million kilometers on my Eco Diesel. It's a 14, and it runs great. And I have the two, two equations covered, because in my opinion, there's two parts to this. Deleting the... EGR, the exhaust gas recirculation, and also installing an oil catch can and preventing all this oil blow-by that these engines have. I'll show you guys in a minute, but I did an oil change about two, three weeks ago. I uh, drained all the oil out of the system. I put exactly 10 liters back in. I didn't even check the oil level. I just started driving. I've been spending a couple thousand kilometers now. I'm gonna drain my oil catch can and show you how much oil is in the system, if you put the recommended amount of oil in these trucks after an oil change, um, how much oil is being pumped through your truck. So if you're interested about that and you want to see how you can potentially save your eco diesel, stay tuned. Okay, guys, coming up. All right, guys, so here's the truck. Going to go in here, check the kilometers, pop the hood. So it looks like I've went 2,100 kilometers. So I figured at least 2,000 kilometers. So went 2,100 kilometers since the last oil change. I have not checked the oil yet. I put 10 liters exactly in, like I said, I'm gonna pop the hood now and uh, we'll explain the oil catch can system to you guys and what kind of benefits you can get from it. Here's inside of the truck. I don't know if you guys have seen this beauty before, but basically here's what I got going on. So here's the positive crankcase ventilation piping, like I mentioned. So historically it comes up and it basically attaches right into the other side right there. There's a coupler, and then it gets pumped just before, just after that uh, oval uh, intake uh, piping there that everyone seems to like to replace for the sickest mod ever. Um, it goes back in there, so then obviously it gets pulled through the turbo, through the intercooler piping, and then it gets um, put back into the intake, which is no good. You do not want that. So what I did is I went ahead, I just literally cut the wire, cut the uh, piping plumbed on this Frankenstein looking stuff here me and my buddy did and it's not pretty but it works it's a Porovent 200 pretty expensive system uh, really good um, oil uh, I'll show you after I drain it because I don't want to spoil the surprise um, really good system highly recommend it the filters I think go for like 80,000 kilometers or so they're, they're really high quality so then down there I've just got a ball valve so I'm gonna set, get set up on the ground here see how much comes out all right well hopefully this recording works because I've been having hell of an issue with this uh, this camera lately. Now, I'd show you what the ball valve looks like, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Go in here, pop this bad girl up, and open. Wow, oh my God. All right, I'm coming out. All right, so here's the oil that came out of the catch can. It's roughly 100 milliliters. So that's how much oil is uh, being pumped out of the top of the engine. This is a brand new oil change. A whole, like 100 milliliters essentially gets pumped. You know, this is 2000 kilometers worth of driving. Gets pumped from the positive crankcase ventilation just before the turbo and gets recirculated. So, I mean, that's pretty crazy. So, you know, why do you need this catch can? You know, this is a the main question of the video. You need the catch can because you want to keep your oil um, clean for as long as possible. Basically, when your dirty oil vapors, 
get pumped back into the intake, they get pumped into the combustion chamber. And instead of, you know, combusting clean air, you've actually got oil vapors that seep down, this is what they say, seep down the, uh, past the piston rings into the oil sump. And then, you know, that's how that oil makes it back into the pump and it's just a vicious circle. So, you know, as you're driving longer and longer, you're getting dirtier and dirtier oil pumped all around your system and your, your oil sump's actually getting dirtier and dirtier. So that's what the oil catch can does, right? So the vapors come through, they get caught in the catch can in the bottom there. And then what I do usually is, depending on how much I'm driving, I'll just leave that oil right in there till the next oil change. Um, you know, cause right now if I check my dipstick, oh hell, let's do it right, why not? I can pretty much guarantee you, look at that, I'm below the min. I don't know if you guys can see that, maybe right there. I'm below the minimum mark, okay, so. Sorry, let me put that back in. So I'm below the minimum mark. So now if I just went ahead and added more oil, you know, what would happen? It would just literally, because with the more oil in the, in the crankcase from the sump, it's gonna pressurize the same, that 100 milliliters is gonna get pumped back right into my catch can. And I'm just gonna keep putting oil from the catch can into the engine, back and forth. You know, there, there's no point. So the real oil level is not 10 liters, in my opinion. It's, you know, less, 100, 100 milliliters, really. Now, I wouldn't short yourself every oil change, but you gotta think about that, you know? These engines don't, at 10 liters, uh, driving 2,000 kilometers, they blow by 100 milliliters of oil. Um, you got to keep that in mind. All right, let's talk about the other half of the equation. So the catch can, you know, you want to catch the, the oily vapors from the positive crankcase, pumping them out. And then you want to eliminate this thing here. It's the EGR, okay? In my opinion, you absolutely have to do this. There's no, there's no getting around it. Here's your EGR, right? This should have an EGR diffuser tube, which goes from the EGR to the intake on the backside there. Hopefully you can see... I've got a block off plate there. I could remove the whole EGR if I wanted to, but there's really no reason. Um, unless you got a leak, which is pretty common, but basically it's disabled now. So if you're not familiar with an EGR, essentially what's happening is, I don't know what the percentage is. Some people say, you know, up to 10%, 10% of the exhaust gas that from combustion, which should go through your tailpipe and out the back of your truck, actually gets recirculated back into your intake. It's, you know, help with the emissions. So you can imagine how dirty the air is from combustion, right? So now they've been, it's been brought in the EGR, cooled, um, because exhaust gas is insanely hot and you don't want hot air into your intake, which is being cooled from an intercooler. You know, you want cool air, right, for a good performance, right? That's why people spend a stupid amount of money on the cold air, cold air intake. Um, which gets sucked into a turbocharger, which heats it up anyways. But that's another funny joke. Um, you know, your hot ga gases get cooled off, pumped into your EGR, but they're, they're cooled off soot, if you can imagine this. So, you know, what is that doing for your, your intake? You know, there's lots of guys, go ahead, they take this out. This was a common thing, you know, clean your, in clean your diffuser tube, you know. There's no point in cleaning your diffuser tube. Every time you open that block off plate where the diffuser tube goes and you remove the diffuser tube from the intake, you risk breaking off. Um, well, you'll see when you pull it off, it's just caked on soot. <laughs> and that can fall down in your intake and you're gonna have a hell of a time um, cleaning it or getting it out of there. And you can cause a lot of problems. So don't, don't bother messing with that. Just delete it. Shut that thing off through a tune it won't pump the gases back in and your engine will last quite a bit longer, in my opinion. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing, really. The catch can catches the oily vapors that go into the um, intake and the EGR blocking that stops the exhaust gases from going back in. So with those two things, you know, going into where clean air should go, I believe that's what's happening. The, Oil's getting contaminated. Oil passages are getting sooted up so bad they block off, and then you, you end up losing the low, uh, 
the lower low end failures that these uh, main bearings are doing. So highly recommend you get these. I'll leave a link in the description for the Proven 200 that I bought. And as for a tune, because I get these emails daily, you're gonna have to go online and have a look. It's not exactly uh, not exactly legal. So I'm not condoning it. I'm just telling you to do what you gotta do. I've had this truck almost seven years now and I wanna keep it forever, so this is what you gotta do. Also, you gotta think about too your, uh, when you modify the airflow on these engines, you know, these are new engines, all high tech stuff, right? When you cut that cable, sorry, when you cut the uh, hose and you just route it to this and route it back, you've got a pressure difference now because the pressure threshold for the intake, um, there must be some sort of sensor here, but essentially it's changed. I mean, if you look at all the volume that you've added, it's no longer the same. So you can, I did throw a check engine light when I installed this. So you've got to, uh, you got to work around that. Depending on your tune, you may be able to just delete that code, uh, block that sensor, which is what I did with Celtic tune. Um, you know, that's a little bit sketchy because if this, if this hose ever gets clogged up, blocked off completely, the crankcase has no way to vent and then you're going to have issues. Um, the reason I deleted the code completely is because I'm not worried. This Proven 200 has like several different vents. The caps event, there's actually a uh, bunch of springs in there and it vents through the top. Um, if, uh, if something gets clogged, I mean, I guess if it gets clogged from here to here, I'm going to have issues, but I mean, look at the size of the hose. I think I'm going to be okay. But um, some oil catch cans don't throw codes. Um, you'll just have to look into that yourself. All right, guys. Well, like always, I really appreciate all the support you guys have been showing the channel. These little eco diesel videos. It's funny, the very first video I uploaded on this channel was a, a uh, cold start video. I don't even know why I filmed it. I was on the way to the gym, and it was like minus 40 below minus 40 Celsius up north, uh, northern Ontario. And uh, I thought I would record a video. So it seems like this channel's uh, picked up a lot of uh, traction with Eco Diesel videos and I do work hard putting them out. I hope this one helped you guys. Like I said, I strongly recommend you get the oil catch can and you get the delete, okay? You know, I understand it's not exactly good for the environment, yada, 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 but you know, at the cost of a $10,000 engine, it's just, a uh, you know, we bought this truck and we're stuck with this truck, so you got to make it work. You know what I mean? Um, when I saw that video, that YouTuber there, I wish I remembered his name. <laughs> hey, calling him the YouTuber. But uh, when I saw that video, the blocked passages, and like I said, I heard it, heard it on the forums before. It just makes total sense. You know, these engines, the oil contaminates and you have issues. So get yourself oil catch can, get yourself a delete, you know, head on Kijiji or Craigslist, find out whoever's doing them. Uh, usually you can ship your ECU to them, go to them, buy a second ECU, ship that ECU to them, they can program it and then you swap them. Uh, there's lots of options, so do something. Take care of yourself out there, guys. And uh, look forward uh, to this video I'm gonna be putting out here. I've already kind of started recording it. Uh, it's gonna be my 250,000 kilometer review of this truck. I'm the original owner. Been through the paces with it, it hasn't been perfect by any stretch but I've worked through it and uh, overall I really do like the truck and I'll uh, show you guys in that video okay so look out for that one in the next couple months and uh, like I make these videos as the truck needs work I kind of put them out and I also got a whole bunch of other stuff going on here we're on this 10 acre property in Niagara Falls and uh, trying to get this homestead going too so just busy all around and on top of that we're working a zillion hours a week so Anyways, thanks for watching guys and have a good day.